So the other day, I was hanging out with my friend Renee, and our mutual friend Jordan comes up to us and tries to get us to watch this YouTube video that he had made. And, well, the, uh, the video title under his video, it wasn't really enticing, so I told him that, and then we didn't watch it. But then later, I was thinking, what if we lived in a world not ruled by the need for clickbait, where art prevailed over the desire for more views? And I was like, that'd be a pretty good world. Combine that desire to create a better world with my desire to make a show similar to my other show, The Pitch, uh, but better, and that incorporated my friends and characters that I hang out with over on this channel. I also combined it with my friend Sam's desire to review commercials and a few other things, and what you get is this show, The Subfeed, reviewing, recapping, and reacting to the best and worst of the web. What we review, recap, and react to can be old, new, relevant, not relevant. It really doesn't matter as long as it's web content that we feel is worth talking about. Now, exactly how we talk about it will vary from episode to episode. Sometimes it'll be one big review of one movie or web series. Other times it'll be more like this episode, where it'll just be my opinion on a whole smorgasbord of things that I either really liked or that you viewers at home really liked and sent in to me. But before we get into it, we have to establish the ground rules, because without the ground rules, then the show won't, won't be as good. Rule number one. Hold on. Can you actually see the whiteboard? Rule number one, no starting, taking advantage of, or focusing too much on drama. This is done so that we don't become a, a drama alert ripoff. We're talking about content here, not what YouTube personalities spend their time doing. Rule number two, no political, religious, or otherwise controversial opinions unless they're relevant. Rule number three, no self-promoting. This both goes for me, I can't plug my own videos, that would get boring. And it also goes for you guys when you send me in stuff. If you're self-promoting, I probably won't feature your stuff unless I just really like it. Besides, I literally have a Patreon perk for talking about whatever you guys want me to talk about. So, like, if you want your own content to be featured, you have to pay me to do it. Plugging your Patreon counts as self-promoting. You are in violation of your own rules, sir. What? It's Turner. You're not allowed to sit there and enforce my own rules on me. I make the rules, I get to enforce them myself. You're shooting this in the back of my pawn shop. You want to break your rules? You can find a new place to shoot. <clears throat> Anyways, I've spent so long introing this video that everything I wrote out for myself to talk about is no longer relevant. Heck, when I wrote this video, Despacito wasn't even the number one video on YouTube yet. Speaking of which, let's talk about Despacito. Why is Despacito the number one viewed video on YouTube? How did we, as an internet, let this happen? I want to know. I get that most of the top viewed videos on YouTube are mediocre music videos and there's not much the YouTube community can do about it, but like, out of all of them, why is Despacito number one? Like, remember when the number one video was Gangnam Style? I was fine trying to build a career on a site where the number one viewed content was Gangnam Style. I don't care that it's not web original, it was fun and weird and it had a deeper meaning. It was social commentary, man. Uh, that's not what most people watched it for, but it had social commentary in it. There was a deeper meaning there. Plus, you always knew Gangnam style couldn't have gotten popular outside of the internet. Despacito is just some mediocre song about sex. It could have gotten popular anywhere. It's infuriating that this is the number one thing on YouTube. I even preferred when See You Again was the number one song on YouTube. Like, it's not as good as Gangnam Style, but the video is colorful and creative, and it's from a good movie, and man, Owl City is just a good artist, you know what I mean? 
Joe, that song is called When Can I See You Again. I believe you're thinking of the wrong song. Shut up, HN. No one asked you. Anyways, in addition to Despacito itself being pretty bad, there are also parodies of Despacito, which aren't any more creative than it is. I'm trying to obey rule number one here, guys, but I have a problem with the parody community on YouTube, and it's that they take they take unoriginal song lyrics from songs they didn't write, they, they take their niche, whether that be Minecraft, or politics, or whatever it is, they mash them together, whether it makes any sense or not, and that's their product. Now some parody artists, they don't have a niche, they just take whatever the first thing that rhymes with the title of the song they think of, like, I don't know, uh, I wear speedos, that rhymes with Despacito, let's make a whole video about that. Moving on to something that honestly annoys me even more, have you guys noticed that the YouTube algorithm really likes video essays right now? Yeah, I've noticed. And I mean, if you make video essays, that's great. I have nothing against the video essay community. It's not video essays themselves I have a problem with. It's a little subgenre of video essays that I like to call hour long rants on why things I like are objectively bad. And they don't have to actually be an hour long, they can be anywhere from 10 minutes long to so long that the person making the video died and had to get someone else to edit it for them. As long as it feels like an hour, you feel me? Anyways, if you're not familiar with the genre, here's a few examples. Why Sherlock sucks. Why Doctor Who isn't good anymore. The Steven Universe rant. Why I now hate game theory. What happened to game theory? Game theory sucks now. Game theory, the worst show on YouTube. I'm not in focus at this angle. There, there are just so many about game theory. I don't know why, but like, I could do a whole episode on people responding to game theory. And I wouldn't even cover them all. But that's, but those are not what I'm talking about. None, none of those are. Not even the ones about game theory. I'm here to talk about one specific rant about so, why something I like is objectively bad, and that one was called Why I Hate Undertale. And you know what the weird thing about this one is? I actually liked it. It's about why this guy hates something I like, and I, I really liked it. And without spoiling what he says in the video, I'd like to talk about why. Actually, actually, this does spoil what he says in the video, just, just a little bit. You should watch it for yourself, though. If you like Undertale, you should watch it for yourself. Most rants, or heck, most video essays in general, seem to talk about these things as if they're objective. There's objective good quality and objective bad quality. This is how you write good. This is how you do good cinematography. This is how good characters emote. But art is comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Art comes through variety. There are many different ways of doing things right. If you dislike something that other people like, it doesn't make sense to say that thing is objectively bad, because then you're just taking all the people that like it and defending them for no reason, and then they're not going to be convinced on your opinions of objective quality. I mean, sure, it makes sense if all you want is views, because you get angry people clicking that annotation like, well, let me at them. But it doesn't make sense from a point of view of actually convincing them. To do that, you have to talk about this in a more of a way that this guy does in this video. He's trying to figure out what aspect of it he's overlooking. The video isn't even completely about Undertale. I mean, it is. Most of the runtime of the video is him talking about Undertale. But it's much deeper than that. It's about the nature of aesthetics, why people like things at all, and why the guy making the video himself likes or doesn't like things. Something I'll repeat a lot if I continue doing this series is that I prefer content to be self-reflective than I do for it to be relatable. Meta content comes from a place of honesty, the one thing that the creator truly understands, his own creation and himself, or herself. I'm not sexist. Relatable content comes from a desire to make your audience bigger and keep them entertained. It's the difference between, well, BuzzFeed content and, you know, anything worth watching. 
Not to say that all video essays or even all rants about why things I like are bad are clickbait. I'm just saying, what am I saying? Not to say that all video essays or all rants about things I personally don't like are clickbait. I'm just saying that this particular video was more worth watching than most of those rants that I see and you should check it out. A message. Oh. What is this beautiful music I hear? Why, it is a remix of the popular show Rick and Morty by the YouTuber Chetrio, who you should check out probably. He's so good at remixing Rick and Morty that he made HN want to watch Rick and Morty, and he doesn't even like Rick and Morty. He hates it. Neither of those things are true. This song is garbage, and I don't hate Rick and Morty. It's just kind of annoying. Here to talk about how fan creations like this can work better as advertisement than actual advertisement is, is my friend, Sam Sale. Where's Sam? I don't know, I haven't seen him since you guys came over here to film that documentary about his life. Yeah, I haven't seen him since then either. We should probably make sure he's okay. We probably should. Anyways, that probably won't come back to bite us later, so uh... Let's move on. Here is a video yours truly, Chris, sent me just a couple nights ago. It is called Music of the Memes Remastered. It's apparently a re-upload of a really old video, but with a few more editing tricks and with a few uh, more recent memes that obviously weren't included in the first video, which I didn't happen to see. It's a pretty interesting watch, especially if you're a meme aficionado as I am. And the guy making it clearly put a lot of effort into the editing of this thing. The problem is that he put a lot of effort into editing this thing, which means that a lot of the songs kind of overlap, almost as if it's a mashup, but like they don't really mash up together, so it doesn't, it doesn't sound good. It's not even like it's a mashup medley or something, like sometimes the songs are just played next to each other. Most of the time it'll just kind of cut to the just next playing song, on its own and then it'll just cut to the next song, song and that song will try to fade in the next, the next song, song and all go together. together. The video is just an extremely chaotic mess and by the end of its 13 minute run you just want it to be over man. This isn't even mentioning that its decisions about what is and is not a meme are a little weird. It's just frustrating to watch this video. Like I said, it's very good, very well edited, but it is frustrating to watch. Alright, that is about it. I'll see you guys later.